Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and a while ago I saw this post on Twitter talking about the realities of game development and what success is all about. It got a lot of attention on Twitter and then also on Reddit. This thread has lots of useful info and some numbers on this one specific game, which is very much representative of the general results of a lot of indie games. However, it also has a bunch of statements about the indie dev industry that are not accurate, so I want to give you my point of view. The particular statement that I really disagree with is that it's all about luck, and as a dev you have almost no control, as if the game is just a lottery ticket. Now I really don't want this video to come off as any kind of attack on this dev, I know how much it sucks to have a flop, I've had a bunch of those myself, so I fully understand that this dev isn't really in a good state of mind to think too rationally, it really sucks when you spend years on something and you get zero results. So if the dev is watching this, please don't take my comments too harshly, I'm just using this game and these tweets as an example to talk about some topics that a lot of people think about. I will first discuss the indie game market in general, and then more specifically on why I think this particular game didn't sell as well as the dev would like. By the way, this video is a new format I'm trying out where I give you my thoughts on some topic, I have a different perspective from a lot of people since I've been doing game dev for over 10 years now with many published games, so I think hearing my point of view on some more general topics can be valuable to some of you. There's lots of things that are very important with regards to game dev other than just technical tutorials, so let me know in the comments and like this video if you enjoy this kind of just talking format. So to start with, the thread actually has some actual sales numbers for the game for about 5 months. These are indeed pretty much the numbers that I would expect for something like, let's call it someone's second game. For a first game you would probably only sell a dozen copies, and for a second game maybe a couple hundred, and most indie game devs don't make more than one or two games. So Yampa would say these numbers are absolutely an accurate representation of the great majority of indie games. Then some stats on emailing press, streamers and content creators. They sent out over 2000 Steam keys, and about 10% of them created some content. This I would say is actually higher than expected, but it all depends on who those 2000 press people are. If you email smaller channels, people that get something like 100 views per video, you might indeed get more content created since those people will likely be very appreciative of getting a Steam key, but with so few views it is unlikely to lead to any sales. Then a bunch more stats on the state of the indie game market. Over half of the games make essentially nothing, there's only about 15 to 20% of games making over 50k. After that is the chart showing the number of releases, every year there are more and more games coming out, not to mention that all of the other games that already exist, they still continue existing, meaning if you launch a game this year, you are still sort of competing with something like Terraria that came out a decade ago. So there's lots of stats in this thread, and they are indeed accurate, and they do paint a pretty tough picture. This dev also makes an excellent point that perfectly encapsulates why I would never tell someone to quit their job and gamble everything on their first game. Would you accept a job if they said you would only get paid after several years of work, and with no guarantees of how much that will be, and there's still a huge chance it will be much less than minimum wage. This is indeed the reality, so definitely don't quit your day job expecting to make the next Stardew Valley. I will definitely not lie to you and tell you that all of this is wrong and finding success as an indie dev is super easy, it's definitely not, it's really difficult. But with that said, the opposite of that, that it's all about luck and nothing else, is also not true. That's pretty much the conclusion that this dev reached after looking at their stats. They say that the idea of a meritocracy is a complete illusion and people should stop pretending that luck isn't a gigantic factor. This is where I would definitely disagree with it. I would actually say that the indie dev market is pretty much as close to a meritocracy as it can be. However, there's one huge asterisk when I say that. People listen to that and they think, okay, so that means I just have to make a good game and that's it. And no, that is not what I'm saying at all. Making a good game is only a tiny, tiny portion of what is required to find success nowadays. Meritocracy means you need a good game coupled with good marketing. You can't just focus on making the game and completely ignore marketing and expect to find success. That will not work nowadays. If you do, then yes, that strategy is indeed completely dependent on luck. I've made a video a while ago all about marketing, and I titled it The Most Important Skill to Be a Successful Game Developer. That is not an exaggeration, that really is the reality. Also, the concept of a meritocracy is dependent on the quality of the final product, meaning it has absolutely nothing to do with how much effort you put into it. There are some excellent games that are indeed excellent that were made in just a weekend, and there are some really poor games that were made in years. This is one fallacy that a lot of indie devs fall into. How much effort you put into the game does not matter when it comes to finding success with players. The players only care if the game is good. They don't care how long it took to make. It might sound harsh, but that is the truth. You can sacrifice years of your life building something, whereas someone else can build something in a weekend and the players might prefer the other game. That's really just how it is. If you're a regular on this channel, then you've certainly heard me talk non-stop about the importance of 
wishlist. Speaking of that, go ahead and wishlist my own Steam game, Total World Liberation. We can look at SteamDB to guess how many wishlists this game had at launch. We can look at the chart and we can see that just before release the game had about 90 followers. The general rule of thumb is that wishlists are 10 times followers, so this means that the game had probably under a thousand wishlists at launch. If you show me a game that has a thousand wishlists, my guess would indeed be exactly the results that this game got, a couple dozen or a couple hundred copies. Wishlists are an excellent predictor of sales, that is why everyone, myself included, asks you to wishlist their game. Nowadays, if you want to find success, you need to launch with a bare minimum of at least like 5,000 wishlists. Anything less than that and you're likely to be better at launch when the game releases. One of their main tweets is also very much a false premise, talking about the handful of positive reviews that the game has and using that as a way to state that the game is objectively good. The only thing that this means is that those handful of reviewers did enjoy the game. That's it. It does not mean that the game is objectively good. You can't really make a statistically valid conclusion on just a dozen reviews. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the game is bad. I'm merely saying that looking at a handful of reviews does not prove the game is objectively good and somehow based on that it should have sold much better. So my advice to you as a developer is don't delude yourself into thinking your game is objectively a masterpiece just because a handful of people liked it. Another extremely important concept is what does success really mean? This word means different things to different people. In the thread, this developer talks about Vampire Survivors and Stray as examples of success. Let me point out that these are not examples of success. Instead, these are examples of mega massive monumental success. I really take issue with this kind of mentality because it completely ignores the huge spectrum between those two extremes. There is a ton of space between games that make $5,000 and games that make $100 million. You don't need $100 million to consider that success. Personally, I consider myself a successful indie game developer. I've made 8 games, I've been making a living from my games for over 10 years now, and of course, none of my games have made $100 million. So yes, you can definitely count mega hits on one hand, but the games that make, say, between 50 and 100k, there are plenty of those. Those are not just 0.16 of new games. I actually made a blog post a real long time ago titled Sustainable Living as an Indie Bottom Feeder. I made that blog post just before launching my game Hyper Knights, which was certainly not a mega hit like Vampire Survivors, and actually did worse than I expected, but since my costs are very low, it was still very much enough for me to make a living. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that success is relative. For some people, like me living in Portugal, making 1k a month is considered success, but someone living in San Francisco, they might need 10k a month just to survive. But regardless of your definition of success, no one needs 100 mil to survive, there's a huge spectrum between selling zero copies and the massive mega hits. Speaking specifically about this one game and analyzing what might have caused it to sell poorly, first of all, like I already said, wishlist, under a thousand wishlists is not a good amount. I'm sure if the dev is listening they might be shouting at their screen, saying I was too busy working on the game to handle marketing, and yep, I do get that, it's really difficult, but that is the reality of the market. You can't just make the game, you also have to market it. Then on the game itself, visuals are extremely important. If you have subpar visuals, you need something truly magical to stand out. The amount of games that have found success with some poor visuals can be counted on one hand, so things like Undertale, it needs to be that kind of special to make it. For me, I have my regular Steam new release videos where I go through the new release list and pick 10 interesting games. If I had seen this game, and maybe I didn't, I probably wouldn't look at it for more than 3 seconds. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, but that is the reality. Nowadays you need good visuals, you need to stand out. The game itself also doesn't really seem to have any unique hook. It looks like yet another turn-based RPG with really nothing special to make it stand out. The title is somewhat intriguing, it's called Video Game Fables, but the description just as a generic turn-based RPG, so when you couple all of those things with a very high premium price point of $20, you really end up in a place where it's really tricky for someone to buy. Maybe the gameplay is really excellent, but with these visuals, with no immediate apparent unique hook and with a high price point, very few people will take the gamble and actually buy it when there are so many other games at this price point or lower. So to give a clear answer to the question in the title, is indie game dev all about luck? I would say absolutely not, but that also does not mean that success is easy. It most definitely is not, it is very hard, but if you have a good unique hook, if you have good presentation, if you market your game before launch and gather over 10,000 wishlists, and of course if the game is good, regardless of how long it took to make, with all of those conditions, yes I believe success is very much possible, very much within your control as much as it can be. Some amount of luck is always a factor, but if you work hard and you work smart, then I believe that luck is only a small portion of the final equation. As an example, I'm currently working on my next Steam game, Total World Liberation. I talked about my hopes and goals in the announcement video. I'm not relying on luck to achieve any of those. I thought long and hard to come up with what I think is a pretty good unique hook. I focus hard on the visuals to make them the best they can be, considering I'm not an artist. I'm obviously marketing the game over here on this channel, on my Twitter, on my other games, and everywhere I can. And of course, I'm working hard on actually developing the game to make it the best game that I can make. 
And like I mentioned, success is relative. If you look at my goals, you will see that none of my definitions of success are based on selling a million copies. Finally, just one message to the dev of this game in case they're watching. They mentioned that they've always suffered from depression and anxiety, and obviously this is not a helpful result. My advice to that is remember that game dev is a marathon, it is not a sprint. So don't put your entire life worth on a single game. For me, I've been working as an indie dev for over 10 years now, and all that time I've had a bunch of success and also a bunch of flops. The flops do hurt, they are indeed very painful, but remember it's just one game of the many that you will hopefully create. For example, I was really crushed when my game Survivor Squad Gauntlets flopped really hard. I love that game, I still do nowadays, I think it's really interesting. I worked on it for over a year, and on launch I don't think it even sold 100 copies. That definitely got me down for quite a while, it was very painful. But after that, I made Game Corp DX, which ended up being one of my most successful games ever. So remember, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. If a project goes bad, take some time off, then study what went wrong, figure it out, and use that to make the next one better. If you do, then I am certain you will find the success that you're after in the long run.